Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Today I want to talk about arena tips so that you can climb and get the frame of your dreams. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord where you can see all my unit stats. Lastly, and this is one more thing I want to mention, my alt guild Corgi squad is recruiting. Uh, we could use a few more members uh, that are you know regular players so that we can get those weekly rewards. If you're interested in joining, jump on the Discord and make a post and we'll get you in. We accept pretty much everyone, so what do you have to lose? Alrighty, so I'm going to give a bunch of tips here on arena climbing, and I'm going to show a few matches that I'm playing in the background just so we can get an idea of the offense team that I generally use. So let's go ahead and get into it. So my first tip for climbing in arena is to establish the window of time you need in order to climb. This may seem kind of like a silly, obvious thing, but when I first started you know, pushing arena, and this is the first season I've done it, by the way, I always hear people talk about rush hour and, oh yeah, you have to play during rush hour, you know, get as many points and get into legend. And so in my head, my concept of what arena pushing was is you hop on for like the hour before, you know, the week closes, you do as well as you can and you push into legend and get some points. And that's not completely untrue. However, you have to get fairly high each week if you want to get a gold frame, right? If you're in the top three at the end of the 12 weeks of the season, you get one of those super cool rainbow frames. Top 30 gets a gold frame and everybody else gets a silver frame, right, if you're in the top 100. I wanted to push for gold and I noticed the first couple weeks that I was playing, I was ending anywhere from like 50 to like, I think 70 or something. And I thought, you know, this is not enough to get into top 30, right? Um, now I have even more to make up for. Um, and, you know, I talked to a few people and it was, uh, you know, my buddy Valk in the guild who pointed out, he's like, well, you probably just need to push longer. And in retrospect, that's super obvious, but it makes sense. In my head, the concept was, oh, so many people are playing that it doesn't really matter how much you push beforehand because you'll just get pushed down. But that's not true on the final day. So you really should be pushing for at least probably a couple hours if you want to get into the top 30. Um, you know, you can push an hour earlier in the day just to climb up into, you know, like champ one or low legend and then do that last push right before the, you know, the closeout. And once I did that, it was pretty easy and consistent to finish in the top, you know, 10 to 15 spots at the end of the night. So that's the first tip. Establish how long you need to play so that you can consistently get, you know, into the spot you need to get the frame you want. Whether that's a silver frame, whether it's a gold frame, or whether it's one of the super cool rainbow frames. Okay, so arena tip number two is to have something in your defense team that prevents you from getting CR boosted and cleaved. And you can see here on this list that I'm going through, nearly every team has a Politus or a Bellion. And this is why. Uh, it is very, very easy and fast to use like Alots or Flan, boost up a mega DPS unit like Jay Kise, and just AoE wipe the enemy team. And because of that, right, there's a high incentive to be able to do that because the win is so fast. Um, so your defense team really needs to have a way to prevent that from happening. Otherwise, you'll just get farmed, especially in the last hour. This is something that Silliness pointed out to me. Um, he's somebody that's finished, you know, very consistently in Arena. And he has, I think, at least one of those really cool rainbow frames. He may have two. So he knows what he's talking about. And if you look at Arena defense teams within Legend, they all pretty much have Politus Rebellion in them for that reason. Um, I guess you could go the speed route, just go super, super fast and try to discourage it that way. That would be another option to deal with it. But you know, one of those two options are, I think, the primary mode that most people use is either having Politus Rebellion. Okay, the third tip for pushing in Arena is maximize your defense RNG. And this is very similar to Guild War defense. When you're on offense, you have an incredible advantage because you're a human and you have a brain and the AI is pretty stupid. So one of the only ways that you can accrue advantage with your defense team is to maximize RNG and just hope that you high roll. The only times that I ever lose when I'm on offense, it's either I've made a horrible miscalculation in terms of the team I'm bringing, but if I bring any sort of competent team into the fight, the only way I lose is the defense team massively high rolls on RNG. So examples of that would be Counterset, Elbris, right? Any type of RNG proc. And typically this involves Counterset and Elbris on a lot of your heroes, but on heroes that you may not always build on Counterset, considering putting them on Counterset for your defense team. Things like Rem, obviously a Counterset user, Bellion instead of Injury, use Counterset, stuff like that. And hopefully your units counter every single hit and you can win that way. 
Okay, so arena tip number four also comes from silliness, and this has to do with your defense team during rush hour. So during rush hour, you're going to get attacked a lot. And if you don't have a defense team that's optimized, then you have a high potential of losing a lot of points in that hour, right? And, and you have to win very quickly to make up for it. So you basically have two options to deal with this onslaught of attacks that happens in the final hour of the week. You can either go for a surprise factor or you can go for a discourage factor. So the surprise factor is building units on very weird builds. And as a result of this, your opponent takes basically an unsuitable team into yours. An example would be like a hero that's normally built very slow, like Crimson Armin, you build Omega Fast. And then she takes a turn way earlier than the opponent thinks she will and interrupts their entire cycle and potentially gets you a win. Uh, or Rylet, for example, build him at 300 speed and maybe he takes out a unit if they bring the wrong people into him. Uh, these would be examples. Maybe here, for example, they build Huayong at like 300 speed and if she was to outspeed Lilius and she just instantly deletes Rimmer at the beginning of the match or something like that would all be examples of taking the enemy by surprise. So essentially making your off or your defense team, I'm sorry, look like a standard defense team, but then putting weird builds on them. So that strategy is going for green shields essentially in the final hour. You're still gonna get attacked a bunch, but hopefully you net a few wins because you take people by surprise. The other strategy is you just tank down and you go massively annoying. And you basically say, if you're going to attack me, Strategically, it might be an easy win for you, but you're going to be here for a while because I have a bunch of revive units on my team. I have a bunch of super, you know, tanky Aureus things on my team or tanky damage dealers like Aravi, stuff like that. Uh, that just takes a long time to push through. Um, that's the option I usually end up taking, but you have to figure out what works best for you. Arena tip five is something that I've heard my guildmate Valk say a lot, which is in the final hour of, you know, rush hour for Arena, consider changing your defense team. I think this is particularly important for teams that are recognizable and you know because they're recognizable people learn how to beat them. So if you have heroes on your defense team that are not commonly found on other defense teams and people figure out exactly how to beat that team, then maybe consider swapping something out at the last minute on defense. Another thing could be changing from something that tries to cheese wins to something that tries to discourage wins. Basically shifting things up to prevent people from, you know, learning your tricks. Arena tip six comes from Insomnia. He is currently the number one player on the arena ladder. He is going for a top three frame, so I wish him luck. And this tip is to practice your offensive teams during the week. I think it's a really good tip because during rush hour, you need to be efficient. You need to be winning as many games in as, you know, as quickly as possible. And if you're trying to brainstorm how to fight different things, you just don't have time. You're gonna be less efficient, right? So experiment during the beginning of the week, especially towards the beginning of a season or when there's a meta shift so that you are prepared and you just start slamming you know, fights when you go into rush hour. Here's an example. This team that I'm using here, the Conqueror Lilius, ML Kalric, plus Rimmer and Huayong, this is a team that I kind of figured out after playing a couple weeks. I could have probably brainstormed it earlier if I had explicitly been trying to do this. But this team works against like 90% plus of the arena defenses out there. I've had weeks where I literally only used this team, didn't change a single thing, and I ended like top 10, I think, or I think I was the 10th spot, uh, literally only using this team and not changing anything else out. It's pretty fast. It's not quite as fast as cleaving, but you know, I'd say most of the matches are about two minutes, two and a half minutes or so. Um, the idea basically here is that you have two really strong one-shotters, and then you have you know, an unstoppable cleanse in Calric, and you have ML Lilius to CR manipulate and, you know, add more damage to your team, etc. What I like about this team also is that you don't need to outspeed, so it makes it very safe. If an enemy Para goes first, who cares? Calric is going to cleanse. If an enemy Lilius goes first, who cares? She's going to try to provoke your Calric, and even if she pushes him back, it's not a big deal, because he'll cut back up with Warhorn, or he'll uh, resist because I have some ER built on him, and then he'll cleanse. Um, Lilius is also really powerful because she helps manipulate to make sure that my two DPS heroes get to go first, delete you know their threats, uh, and from there it's a 2v4 or maybe a 3v4 or something like that. It does take some practice figuring out what targets to kill first. You have to take Rimmers into account, right, because he'll proc. Uh, you have to take Revivers into account because they can wreck your day. But for the most part, this team beats almost everything. The exceptions to this would be teams with lots of DPS units, typically like an RB plus like two other DPS, because this team doesn't have much mitigation, right? And so 
Arby's going to revive. He's going to do a bunch of damage. The other heroes might go and do damage. I can't tank that much. I want to take out threats quickly. So on a rare occasion when I do need to sub something out, I may swap out like one of the supports for a tank or for ML Haze, something like that. I think you can actually see me do that here. So I'll swap an ML Haze for this fight. Makes it a lot safer because they have the you know Fire Mercedes. Arena tip seven is, especially in rush hour, you need to be able to win fast. So this is kind of putting everything together, but you have to have some sort of cleave or fast win available to you if you want to do well. There are teams out there that are susceptible to cleave, and you know if you do that, that's a win in a very short amount of time, and it's going to increase the amount of points you get you know, in that last hour. So kind of obvious, but don't be afraid to experiment with really hyper-aggressive cleave-type teams in the beginning of the week so that you can pick up those easy points during rush hour. Arena tip six, and this will be the final tip, also from Insomnia, is really prioritize safety during rush hour. When you're experimenting during the week, it doesn't matter if you lose fights, but in that final hour, you really want to have 100% win rate or as close to it as you can get. And this is important because if you do lose a fight, that really takes your momentum away, right? In that loss, you now have to win another fight just to get back to where you were. So you've essentially spent two fights doing nothing all the while you're getting attacked, right? And now you have to make that up. So you lose a lot of time when you lose a fight. Um, in particular, it's important to prioritize safety over your win streak. So if you are you know clearing your list and there's a final fight on the list that looks a little dicey given you know the teams that you're comfortable running it's better to refresh that and just go to the next list than it is to risk the loss so be willing to give up your win streak by refreshing the list uh, to be safe um, so those are all the tips um, hopefully you know you guys were able to learn something um, i know i've learned a decent amount pushing over the last you know five or so weeks in arena here um, this is my first time doing it, hoping to get a top 30 frame. I think I'll get there. I think I'm like ranked 20 right now in the season. So we're in a good spot. Um, just have to maintain the pace. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you have any good tips or uh, strategies you use when climbing arena. Um, I you know, always like to learn more. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time. Later. Scared, run. I'll give you a chance. Here I go. I'm growing tired of this. Act. This is getting old. Shall we put an end to this little game? I never fight a losing battle. I'll do anything for her.